my well, and I'm gonna shout just a little over. Well, and I'm gonna shout just a bit over. Wow, wow, the blood is running way down in my Oh Lord, it's way down in my veins. It's in my heart. Way down, it's in my heart. Oh Lord, it's in my heart. Wow, wow, the blood is running. Way down in my heart. Oh Lord, it's in my heart. Well, when I'm gonna sing just a little over. Well, when I'm gonna sing just a bit over. Wow, wow, the blood is running way down in my heart. Oh, Lord, it's in my way down in my Oh, Lord, it's in my I've got it in my heart. It's in my heart. Wow, wow, the blood is running. Oh, Lord, it's in my heart. Way down in my veins. And the Redeemer of the Lord said, Amen. Oh, it's in my vein. Ain't nothing wrong with shouting a little bit over here, singing a little bit over there, Pray, <laughs> praying a little bit. Amen. Again, we're thankful to the God of heaven for, again, the privilege of just uh, being here in the house of worship. We want to thank all of you who have come to be with us on this Pew Packing 2016. Uh, we thank you so very much for sharing in this, in this wonderful day with us. We had about this many this morning, and with this, what we have this evening, I can say we packed the pews. <laughs> We just didn't do it all at the same time, but that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Again, we're so thankful and grateful to have Brother Albert Nelson with us. Uh, I, I don't even have to introduce him. You already, you already know who he is and what he stands for as well in the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. want to thank the Sand Hill Church for loaning him on today to be with us. Amen. We enjoyed the message on this morning, one righteousness at a time. Uh, well, Albert worked that thing, Booker. I'll tell you, he worked that thing this morning, and uh, we're looking forward to it on this afternoon as well. Again, we want to, uh, before I forget, we want to uh, thank you for the offering, and we'll, 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 we'll give a thanks for that in just a moment, but I want to uh, quickly say to the sisters, too often our forget to tell the sisters what a great meal that you prepared for us on today. Just enough, just enough to, to, to take us through. I do my best eating when I get back home. <laughs> Amen. I take the food from here, but I do my best eating when I get back home. Again, uh, I'm just so glad to have you. We, we, we want to show Brother Nelson his support from uh, the preachers within this area. And so we're going to ask all the preachers and the elders and deacons if they would stand. Yeah. Amen. Amen. What a blessing. Amen. Thank you, brothers, for uh, sharing on this day with us as well. Uh, Albert, you got, uh, you, you got some back now. You, you got some back. You can reach out there now. <laughs> Thankful for Sister Judy being with us and, again, the Sand Hill family and all that have have graced our audience on this morning. Bow with me as we give thanks for the offering. All wise and eternal God, we again thank you for this offering which has been received. We pray that we might use it in a way and manner pleasing and acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 So at this time, uh, I asked Bernice to sing, but he told me he wasn't a singer, he was a preacher. <laughs> I told him ain't nothing wrong with singing and preaching. <laughs> Chris, how you feel? Feeling, Chris ain't feeling right. You, I want you to. Let me go on and, and finish out the program. Uh, Bernie's going to come and he's going to sing amen. Then Albert going to get up and preach. 
And, and then uh, Brother Story going to give the invitation song. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Ronnie Wells going to give the closing song. Right. And Ricky Turner going to dismiss us. Right. That all right with y'all? All, right. all right then. Come on, Bernice. mentioned this this morning, I don't have all timers yet, just some timers. So uh, to, to be back home uh, and, and uh, to, to especially be with Ralph and, and Bernice uh, in particular, uh, Bernice a little bit more than Ralph because uh, Bernice was, is younger than I am and he used to try to run with us uh, <coughs> when we was running for the other man. Uh, but but he couldn't, we didn't let him go much because we were trying to take care of the young guys. Uh, but uh, we're just grateful to be back. Uh, Bud Taylor started us off uh, here at, at Green Meadows, not in this building, but the building across the street. Uh, we didn't want to go to church. But he stopped and, and, and get us every Sunday morning and bring us to church. Mama didn't go to church, and I, I always wondered, why he made us go, and, and she was his daughter. But, but we had to go. And that set a precedence. Uh, I'm reminded of, of Bernice's mother and, uh, and what she uh, did with him. She just made him come. Uh, and, uh, but it, it all worked out for the better. For the better. We wouldn't even think about being here if it hadn't been for them. And so we, 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 have, to, we have to mention that. Ryan, I want to say uh, to your parents more than you, and then to you because you're grown now. Aren't you grown? You're grown. <laughs> but out of all the young men that Green Matter have here, Ryan always stayed. 
He, he always stays. He always stays and he participates. Uh, that says something about uh, his, his mom and him. <laughs> now, now, I'm not talking about nobody else's mama. But, but I'm, I'm just, I, I just want to give praise where praise is due. It, it's just, just good to have young folks stay in close to the church as much as they can uh, because, uh, you know, women will, anyway, let me go on to the, to the lesson. And then to Sand Hill. Uh, thank Sand Hill for coming uh, today. Uh, all the women showed up. They brought, they brought two of the men, uh, but, uh, but, but most, of, most all of the women showed up. We're grateful for you. Sister Nelson, if you stand up and let everybody see, no, that's all right. She, she don't want to do that either. Listen, I seen, when, when Bernice was singing the song, Amen, I seen some of the folk in the audience, Brother Ronnie, singing like this. Like, like, they, like they could hardly make it. And I concur with Ralph. The women did a beautiful job. And let me throw this in, too. I won't be long. I promise you I won't be long. Because I know you're already ready to go. You're ready to go. And, and you are patronizing me. I thank you for patronizing me and, and, and being here uh, 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 to, to listen to me out of respect uh, uh, for your elders, uh, me being one of them. Uh, and thank you for that. But uh, where, where was I at? <laughs> yeah, saying an amen. I know that some of them was already almost asleep. They were trying to sing, but they were almost asleep. So we're not gonna we're not gonna hold you uh, too long on this scene. And one final thing of my uh, preliminaries, I want to say thank you to my sister-in-law, uh, and I ain't gonna ask her to stand up either because she ain't gonna want to do it. Uh, but Betty, uh, that's my oldest brother's wife. She's here today. Uh, if y'all don't know who she is, she won't know by me because she can already jump on me for for calling her name. But my sister passed away about two and a half months ago. Before she passed away, uh, we had a talk with her, me, Tommy, and Betty, because she needed some special care. She needed to actually go into the, to the uh, nursing home for rehab, for rehab. And I was trying to impress upon her she needed rehab because she could not take care of herself. So she refused uh, my, my conversation. Uh, she usually do what I tell her to do, <laughs> but, but she actually told me this time, I ain't going and you can't make me. And I said, I sure can't. But uh, when in our conversation, my sister-in-law says, which was just amazing to me, uh, that uh, she don't have to, if she don't want to go to the nursing home, she can come and stay with me and Tommy. Now, she hadn't asked Tommy. She says to me in private, she says, Tommy it would, not, would not offer this but he agrees with me. I says, okay, okay. So we asked her to do that. She had agreed to do that uh, if she just had to stay about two weeks. So I just want to say to Betty, I just appreciate you for the offer because it ain't many of us left uh, that would really look out for other people more than we look out for ourselves. But there are some, there are some that would do that, and, and Betty is one of them. Thank you again, Betty. Our lesson for this evening, for the next 15, 12, 12, uh, if you act like you're listening, it'll be about 12, <laughs> about 12 or 15 minutes. Uh, but if you act like you're not listening, I'm going to quit in just a minute. <clears throat> because I'm older now, and, and to go along with my lesson, you can't make me, but I can be persuaded. To go along with that, I'm 61 years old now, and I don't worry about going to, anybody, going to anybody's house that I am not comfortable in. I don't worry about it. If you don't want me to come, just don't invite me, and, 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 and I won't come. I mean, that, that's, but I can be persuaded to do certain things if you treat me right, if you treat me right. The lesson comes from John chapter 6, verses 60 through 69. And let me kind of summarize the lesson, what, uh, the text. What was going on here was that Jesus uh, was telling his disciples how to get close to him and how to be a part of him. 
He makes a bold statement in his lesson here. He says, you can't be a part of me unless you eat of my body and drink of my flesh. Yes, and the disciples looked at him with indignation and they said, this is a hard saying. Who's going to be able to do this? Who's going to, and what they were actually saying, they was asking themselves a question. Who's going to be able to eat his body and drink his blood? I ain't going to do that. They already decided they wasn't going to do it. So the text, that's the lesson of the text. We sometimes worry as preachers, and I just do this myself, seem like that we try real hard to make sure the church is saved. We try real hard to make sure the church got what the church needs. Even with me and, and my position, I always, always, I've been at Sand Hill for 23 years. When I first uh, got the job there, they told me they're going to pay me $275 a Sunday. They was taking up 283 So I told them, I said, you can't pay me that. Now, you can't pay me no 200 They said, well, we got $800 in the bank, and we're going to pay you 275 because we got a cushion. I said, your cushion is very thin, and I can't accept that kind of money. Pay me $125 a Sunday, and if the church do better, you'll do better by me. And I'm, I'm here, and I'm going to make sure you do better by me. So it, it, that's the way it works. But you got to make sure, you got to make sure that you persuaded, you are persuaded to do and work for the Lord and not for yourself. If you work for the Lord, yourself will be taken care of. It'll be taken care of. We worry sometimes. Some of the older people used to say that you can, you can lead a horse to the water, but you can't make him drink. We tell the young people now, you can drive because I went to a school the other day uh, to talk to one of the administrators, and I bet you it was 150 cars lined up to pick up the elementary children. 150 cars. I asked the administrator, you don't have any buses here. We got two. Two buses for 600 students. You can drive your child to school, but you can't make him learn. You can drive your child to school, but you can't make them learn. But they can be persuaded. Luke chapter 18, verse 28. It's a good start. Peter says, it's a good start if you do this, what Peter did. Peter says, I have left, I have left all to follow Jesus. I've left my house. I left my parents. I left my brother. I left my wife. left my children. I left everything to follow Christ. That's what you need to do. And I, that may seem hard, and folks say, well, I'm not going to lose, I'm not going to leave my children. I'm not going to leave my wife. I'm not going to leave any of that. Well, what Jesus is saying, don't love them more than you love me, because if you do, you can't come to me. Amen. That's all he's saying. He's not saying treat them bad. Matter of fact, you ought to treat them good. Amen. But don't put any of them ahead of Christ, Amen. because your mission will be in vain. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. It's our job. It doesn't matter really what anybody else do. We are just, the, we are in the persuasion business. Our job, Peter told Timothy, preach the gospel. Just preach the word. Our job is just to preach the word. I, I, I tell people all the time because people don't want to hurt people's feelings. So therefore, they won't tell folks the truth. I'm a truth kind of guy. If you're ugly, I'll tell you you're ugly. If you need to know. Sometimes you're ugly, you don't need to know you're ugly. So I'll leave it alone. But I'm at, but on more vital stuff, on more vital stuff. If, you need, if you're doing something wrong, I'm going to be the one to tell you. I'm going to tell you. If I know it, if I know it for a fact, I'm not going to withhold it from you. Now, the reason that folk don't want to tell people is because they're scared of the reactions that they're going to get. Listen, listen. It is better to tell them. It is, better, it is better to tell them the truth, the error of their way, so that they may have an opportunity to change. Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. your business. It's not your business to, to wonder what folk going to say when you say something to them. It's out of your hands. You just tell them the truth. What they do with the truth is up to them. 
We worry sometimes as preachers about folk receiving the truth. Don't worry about that. Just live right in front of them, and your actions will persuade them to do right by you. I am just all at all. I went to a funeral the other day of a, of a lady that, that declared that she was my girlfriend. I've got a lot of girlfriends from Georgia, and all of them are in their 80s. <laughs> they don't hear me when I talk. They can't hardly see me when I come to them. <laughs> but they're my girls. This lady died. She, was, she, she, was, she lived right, uh, right across the railroad track. Her husband died about 20 years ago. And I would go over across the railroad track and live on Prosper's Road. I'd go down now, and I, when i come in the house, the husband would say, I know you came to see Iris, so I'm going to the barn. <laughs> you know, you got to be a pretty good guy. And, I'm not, I, and I, I don't mind encouraging myself on this. You got to be a pretty good guy when a man can walk in your house and, and walk in the house with his wife, and he leaves. <laughs> Got to be a pretty good guy. Yeah, because everybody's going to leave you in the house with their wife. <laughs> you, can, you can't make nobody do nothing, but they can be persuaded. And, jo and John chapter 6, you talk about, you heard the saying about what I said the lesson was about, the eating of the flesh and drinking of the blood. Peter states, we have come to believe in the last part of John chapter 6. Jesus asked, after some of the folk that were walking with him and they were disturbed about what he said, they stopped walking with him. The Bible says they turned and walked no more. Jesus turned to the disciples and he asked them, to the 12, he says, will you all go? go? Peter says, where am I going? Who can I go to? You have the words of eternal life. I don't have nowhere to go. Then Peter says, I'm persuaded. Now, I did put the word persuaded in now. But he said, I believe. We believe. We have believed and we know that you are the Christ. Peter was persuaded by all the things that Christ has done in front of them that he was the one that he need, they need to stay with. Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 19, and I'm almost through. Things to do to cause people to be persuaded. Romans chapter 12, you read this when you go home with clarity. Love without hypocrisy. Don't just act like you love folk. Love them. You know the best ones to love is the one that you know don't like you. Now, you know some folk that don't like you. I mean, you know them. Treat them good. Paul says, heap coals of fire up on the head. Not the one you got out of my fireplace. But he's talking about love them. Love them genuinely. Uh, stay away from evil. Cling to that which is good. Be kind, affectionate to one another with brotherly love. Frequent and spirit. Patient and tribulation. Continue steadfast in prayer. Given to hospitality. Bless those who curse you. Finally, Paul says, as much as it is possible, live peacefully with everybody. Amen. What Paul says in that, in that text there is that there's going to be some people that you can't even. That's why he says, as much as possible. I do that as much as possible, I try to get along with everybody. Amen. I mean, all the people that don't like me, Brian, are the folks that don't know me. <laughs> Somebody saying now that's where I don't like you because I know you. <laughs> but you know, Jesus is trying to tell us how to persuade people to be to be in Christ and to be a child of God. Finally, in closing, three points. Three points. Three points of reference. And 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 uh, Ralph thought he was just making a statement when he says, I can I I, I can piggyback off of some of these preachers' coattails. Rap already did it. Judy's got this, this phone that tells where all the scriptures are about everything that ever happened. She has this app. Well, I don't use the app because I study more and I find stuff I ain't looking for when I do it the old-fashioned way. I, I, that's, just, that's just me. Don't tell me I don't know how to work it because I can learn. I really don't, but I can learn. 
But, I, but, but Bernard saw me looking for something in the, in the scriptures, and he knew it was imperative for my lesson today for me to kind of close out with. He said, what are you looking for? I said, I'm looking for where uh, King Agrippa says to Paul, after Paul preached this sermon to him, he says, you almost persuaded me to be a Christian. Yes, sir. Uh, the, the, the boy just rattled it off. He said he found me like 26, somewhere around about 28. <laughs> 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 so I go to it. There it was. It's a blessing, church. You can be persuaded. King Agrippa was not persuaded. He was not persuaded on that day. There's not a recording to say that he wasn't persuaded later. But he says, you, I was almost persuaded. Pharaoh, Exodus chapter 13. Pharaoh, Pharaoh was persuaded after the plagues, with the number 10 plague of killing the, 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 young, children, the young babies. Pharaoh was persuaded in his heart to let the children of Israel go. Now, it didn't last long. Because he was persuaded again to go get him. But he was persuaded. You can't make him. You can't make people do anything, but you can't persuade him. Finally, finally, I close. In 2 Kings chapter 5, there's a story there told about a young girl that Naaman was the captain of the army. He was such a good captain, he had, he had went and conquered a whole country, Syria. And in the company, he bought a little girl back. The little girl now is Mrs. Naaman's housekeeper. The little girl is in the house, and she, and she listened to Mr. and Mrs. Naaman talking, by the way. Ms. Naaman says, Naaman, you're sick. You got leprosy. You, you, you can't be healed because you got leprosy. Naaman had... Resolved to the fact, too, that he couldn't be healed. But he thought that if he could get some help, and that he might have a possibility. The young girl says in a prayerful kind of attitude, I wish that you guys were in Samaria. Because if you was in Samaria, there's a prophet there that you'd already been healed. Naaman Packs up his clothes. Get his little dollar for Come on now. He's going to submit. He was persuaded by the young girl. Mm -hmm. How many of you are persuaded today to come to Christ? If you can be persuaded that the life you now live, I, li I said it this morning, I so say again today, the life you now live in, how's that working for you? If you're living for Satan, I guarantee you, it ain't working too well. Some days it works, some days it don't. Playing the numbers. How's that working for you? Is that, is that causing you to have a bigger bank account? What you're doing now, is that working for you? If it's not, then try Jesus. Try Jesus. I tell you, he'll work. He'll work for you. It'll work for you. Your life would be better if you need to come to Christ. Please decide. Be persuaded in your own mind. See, can't nobody, I know mothers, and mothers wish that they could be persuaded for their sons because we're losing a lot of our boys. And young girls too, but more so the young men. We're losing them to the world. And they're getting killed. Every night you hear something about somebody in some kind of violent act that they put themselves into. If we could introduce Jesus to them, persuade them, get close enough to them to persuade them to come to Jesus. Come by, believe in what you heard. I hope you heard sometimes today that Jesus died and he was buried and he rose again on the third day. You need to hear that every time the word is preached. Then believe that same thing. Come repentant and being baptized in the water grave of baptism. If you already a member of the church, but just done things to cause the church to be talked about, you ought to be ashamed. But you have the opportunity yes, to correct your life today. Will you do it? Do it while together we stand and sing a song of encouragement. Page 241. I must tell Jesus all of my trials I cannot bear Burdens alone in my 
distress thee, kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Burdens along. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. Jesus can hear me. Jesus alone. We have three standing. We'll let them make the statement in their own way. Begin with Sister Linda.